So let's get started by opening up the playground or playing a little bit around in the playground. And just open up Xcode and instead of clicking on create a new Xcode project, which you will do eventually, but right now we're just going to play around a bit in the playground. So click on that, <clears throat> double tap there, and just I'm just going to name it my playground, save it on my desktop and put it in full screen. So here we have import UI kit, which you always have to do in order to be able to do stuff. So don't don't think uh, too much about this. But what we are going to focus on is the if statement. And as uh, the word implies, an if statement is something that runs a certain code. If something is um, if a certain statement is either true or false, um, which I will show you how to discern in a moment. So let's see, let's just start by creating a variable. We're going to start completely from scratch here and I'm going to explain everything what's going on here. So I'm going to say uh, my name is equal to Paul. Let's say my name is equal to Paul. And then I'm going to check if my name is equal to Paul. So if name is equal to Paul and if that is true, then I'm going to display my name is Paul, Paul, right here. And as you will see, it, it shows that my name is Paul, which means that this one is true. Now, as you will see here, we are using two equal signs. And that is because if we just were to use one, then we would set, set name to be equal to Paul. We don't want to do that. We want to check if the name is equal to Paul. So if you want to compare something instead of passing a value, we use two equal signs. And if I now were to make the P small, name wouldn't be equal to Paul and this wouldn't be written out here in the console. So that is the first element that I want you to remember and that is equal to. Here we can check if a certain value is equal to something. So I'm going to create another one. Number is equal to one. And if let's say number is equal to five, then we're going to run this code. And as you can see, this code isn't run because number isn't equal to five. But if we now set it to one, number should be equal to one and this code is run. So if statements are incredibly powerful because um, you can by Comparing values, you can either choose to run a certain code or not to run a certain code. Now, there's one more thing here that I want to show you that's very basic and uh, is going to get you very far that is equals and also does not equal. So, if I now set exclamation mark equals, this basically means if number is not equal to one. And because number is equal to one, this code isn't run. But if I now were to set five, then number is not equal to five and the code is run. So that are the, that's the two basics. And you can also do something like this. If number is smaller than five, which is which it is, then this code is run. If the number is larger than five, which it isn't, the code isn't run. And you can also do if number is equal to or greater than five, which it isn't. But if I now set it to five, for example, then this code should be run. And I just have to make sure that I also have certain, uh, I should know this, but um, this means if number is greater or equal to five, this code is run. So those are the basics really. It's equal to, it's not equal to, it's greater than or equal to five. And it's, um, greater than and it's smaller than. So those are your basics, uh, basic tools for comparing values. And now we're going to extend this one step further. And we're going to say if number is equal to five and by using this one also, now we can have two statements. So first of all, we check if number is equal to five, which it is. And then these two means and, and. It simply means and. So this means that we can have another check here. So we can say if number is equal to five and name is equal to Paul, 
then we are going to run this piece of code. And as you can see, it does because both of those are true. But if I now were to set um, name is and the number should be equal to five and the name should be equal to Carl, this code isn't run because the name isn't Carl, it's Paul. So this is also very powerful because now you can have multiple, um, I'm just going to call it checks. You can check for multiple things. You can both check for if number is equal to five and you can check if the name is equal to Carl. So you can have multiple checks in one if statement. What you also can do is put in two pipes like this and this simply means or. So instead of meaning and, it means or. So if number is equal to five or if the name is Carl, then this code is run. And as you can see, this one doesn't have to be true because this one is already true. And because this means or, then just one of them has to be true in order for the code to be run. So let's say this one is six, then the code isn't run because both of them aren't true. But if I now were to say the name of here is Paul, then the code is run because one of them are true which is this one right here. So here again, those are your two basics. It's and, and it's or to, for checking multiple things. Now we're going to extend the if statement now. So this is where it gets really exciting and we are going to extend it with an else. So just write else and put your brackets under it. Now, what we are doing here is we're checking if this is true. And if it isn't, and this code isn't run, this code here is run instead. But if this code here is run, then this isn't run. Only one of the things, only one is always run. So we're going to say here, uh, else, else code was, executed and uh, here I'm basically checking if this is true and in this case it is so else isn't run but let's say number is six and name is uh, Sophia which means this one isn't true so the else code gets run instead so this one basically backs up the if statement it says hey if you aren't running any code, then I'm going to take over and run my last effort or last resort code. So this one is the last resort. You can either just have one if statement, which either is run or not run, or you can put on an else statement that uh, is run if the if statement isn't run. You can also do multiple if statements in one if statement combo. So that is called else if. So here we have the opportunity to do like this, else if we're first going to check if the number is six, which it isn't, so this code isn't run. Then we're checking if the name is equal to Sophia, which it isn't, so the code isn't run. And then here I'm going to have nothing was run. And else is again backing up and running this because none of those were true. So we're going to say if number is equal to six, which it isn't, this isn't run. Else if name is equal to Paul, then this code is run instead of all the others because this here is true. So that is also a very powerful thing to do. You can extend an if statement and have multiple cases. And this is something that you will use all the time. And if you manage to understand if statements, you have taken and you were previously on a one out of 10 on coding uh, knowledge, you have probably taken it up to a three because if statements are used all the time, probably in all codes, and you're going to use it extensively. So here we have just gotten a quick overview or pretty much if you understand all of this, you are, you are, you are golden in if statements. But um, just by using this over and over again, you will start to get a pretty good feel of what if statements actually are and how to use them. And at the end, you will just have it in your fingertips.
So this was it with the if statements. Now, if you enjoyed this, make sure that you click the subscribe button because I will be coming out with a lot of uh, basic tutorials like this one. And uh, once again, thank you for watching.